Hey, uh, <laughs> looks like I missed last Friday, huh? Well, they took down Mother's Day too. Fuck that movie. That movie was whack anyway. Whack ass movie with this dumb ass characters. Just get that shit off my channel. Right here, we got an even better movie. Antichrist, directed by Lars von Trier. Is that film that I always knew about. Depicting a husband and wife who deal with the death of their child, the wife goes through some very atypical grief. So her therapist's husband takes her to the Eden Woods to help her get through her pains. Nothing could prepare him for the symbolic evilness of his wife. Anyway, prepare yourself. It's Antichrist. It's Satan running these woods. If you want to see what happens, including all the messed up parts, stay tuned for the breakdown. Alright, cue the Gohan. Antichrist begins with just straight fucking, like raw dogging all over the damn house. It's pretty graphic actually. While mommy and daddy are so hard at hugging, their son, Nick, decides to go on his own little adventure. Looks like mom and dad took things to the bed, but Nick climbs atop the cabinet and looks out the window. Unfortunately, Nick falls out of the window just as the couple finishes and the boy dies instantly upon hitting the ground. It's grieving time. It's always sad when children die. I can never begin to understand the pain of the parents. The wife takes it very rough and falls out at the funeral. A month passes and the wife has been laying down struck by a typical grief. Already though we know the husband is a therapist due to his disliking of the doctor treating his wife. In two weeks, two weeks, she's back at home. Y'all won't get that one. They say therapists shouldn't treat their family. Maybe they're right, since whenever they have a session, it gets personal. She thinks he is indifferent to the loss of the son. Husband explains that he was just giving her distance so she could finish her thesis. She and Nick took a trip to the Eden Woods to write it. Thinking about Eden made her anxious. We can clearly see her going through the symptoms of some hard anxiety. She starts to deal with it through harming herself and having sex with the husband. That's not gonna do, that won't do. No, she has to be exposed to her fears. Her second biggest fear is the Eden Woods, despite her being secluded there on purpose a while back. So the two make their way to the Eden Woods to fight that anxiety. It's calm and chill until the wife's fears surround her. The husband goes for a little walk while she's napping and he spots grief personified. Well, that doesn't look like grief, does it? It's just a pretty little doe. Well, what's not pretty is the stillborn fawn hanging behind this little mama. Now, we are in the pain era. Chaos Reigns sounds like a cool alternative title to this movie. The wife later wakes up and finds the husband laying around. Still, they gotta finish their exposure in this scary place. But this crosswalk was too much to bear. I don't know why, but it's funny seeing people just sprinting away for no physical reason. Stop laughing, Spooker, this is serious. The husband finds his own way to the cabin, first taking note of the nearby shed. Wife is already in slumber, and he lays alongside her for the night with memories lingering. He should have been more mindful. The next morning, his hand is covered in these white bloated ticks. I'm sure it was a hassle pulling those off, but they still got a lot of work to do. Work like melting into the forest around them to realize it has no power over the wife. Still, nature is metal in the worst times. A baby bird seems to fall out of his nest with ants taking over his body. This is before a hawk grabs it and tears it limb from limb. I think it's hinted that the couple see this happen. So you remember the wife's thesis paper? It was called Gynocide. She was writing it in the Eden Woods sometime before along with her son. Wonder why her ass ain't have him right next to her though. She hears a crying child and rushes to find her son all over the damn woods. Gladly, he was okay, but he was in the shed right next to her. Still, like, he should be right next to you, you know? Well, what was all that crying then? If it wasn't a baby, it had to be something else. Maybe it was an alpine goat? <laughs> it was like the woods itself was crying. Probably the Blair Witch. Maybe that's why she's so anxious about the Eden Woods. The husband says that this is all just panic. Since he's Mr. Know-It-All, she tries to hit him with that Rey Mysterio move. It's hard to explain yourself when somebody denies what you say, I guess. 
but I mean, he is a therapist. Some more breakthrough reveals that she thinks that nature as a whole is Satan's church. Well, if that's the case, then her biggest fear overall must be Satan itself. The next day shows she has no fear of Satan's church. She's confident and fearless, cured of the fear she held. Mr. Know-it-all knows this is weird and she's mad at him for not believing her. After her departure, the husband's own nightmare seems to leak into real life. I wouldn't be surprised if the mental illness spread from Perfect Blue applied for the couple here. The husband walks around where he notices the pain. He happens upon an injured fox in reality, but he sees the fox eating itself. Chaos reigns, it says. You can watch this very clip yourself to see how cute it is. Oh no, we are in a despair arc now. We don't do despair over here, cuz. The husband looks through the attic sometime and sees a lot of women being executed or tortured. The witchcraft era, I guess. He finds the thesis his wife worked on, but it gets less legible with each page. It talks about witchcraft and torture involved in discovering witches. Human nature seems to be evil, but if that's the case, then that means female nature is also evil. That's the wife's point anyway. The wife is embracing the belief that women are all inherently evil. Her thesis didn't start out that way. Maybe that's why she wants him to hit her during random sex. When he doesn't hit her, she fearlessly walks out naked to a big tree to masturbate. If you want to see me explain these censored scenes more, just click on the bitch you link in the description. It's only another video talking about the scenes that are censored in this video. The husband seems to join her and they have sex beneath this entrance to hell. That perhaps was all just a dream. So, here we are. We are getting into the reason why this movie is among the most disturbing. Right as he comes to the conclusion that her biggest fear is in fact herself, she knocks him down to force that kitty on him. He tells her repeatedly that he loves her to know that he does care about her. But she accuses him of lying and slams a wood block directly on his crotch. That hurt everybody, ding -a -ling or kitty. Now this next part I can't show. If you want to see it so bad, just click on that bitch you link. That's all you gotta do. She jacks him off and blood squirts out. You'll see some of it on her shirt. Who wouldn't pass out from that attack? He wakes up hyperventilating and finding a bolted grindstone going through his leg. Homeboy is in pain, but no matter what, he can't take it off because little mama threw the wrench away. He manages to crawl a long way from the shed, but the wife discovers him gone. He hears her screaming for him and nopes right into a foxhole as she inches closer. In the foxhole, he comes across despair, an injured crow that only helps the wife figure out where he is with this loud hollering. No matter what abuse he puts this bird through, there is no solacing it. Well, she finds him but can't drag him out, so she literally digs into the ground to where he is buried alive. It's begging time. The wife is like in a battle against herself. That evilness should have left the husband to die in his early grave. Well, instead, she feels guilty and helps him out of the foxhole. After slowly dragging him back to the cabin, she tells him, oh, you're gonna die, but just not yet. The three beggars gotta link up soon. Somebody has to die at their arrival. Soon he passes out again, and she uses his hand to pleasure herself. It's here that we get a flashback. When she and her husband were having sex as Nick played around, she wasn't as unaware as we thought. Apparently she saw him climb up to the window and even fall out, but didn't even say a word. Damn, maybe she like really is evil. Just her though. For sure she is mentally ill. I'm guessing to punish herself, she cuts off her own clitoris. Now that you will have to see in the uncensored extreme scenes. It was like a signal for the grief to come to the cabin and get his homeboys pain and despair. Somehow, it's like the three beggars here show the husband where the wrench is. She awakens as he unbolts himself from the grindstone, but still, the beggars are here and somebody must die. Anxiety and fear starts to overwhelm him, similar to how it overwhelmed his wife in the beginning. He rages and starts strangling his wife until there is nothing more left in her. 
With his wife dead, he burns her remains in this funeral pyre. I guess it ain't over till the fat lady sings. Now this is the most cryptic of scenes like ever. The husband finds himself viewing many women walking upward upon him. They seem to be wearing outdated clothes too. N not too outdated though. At first, I thought these might represent women executed for witchcraft. If that's the case, then a theory I like best is that once the wife died, these representations of those women were let free from Satan's church. Otherwise, I, I don't really know. I don't think they were gonna harm the husband though because he seemed to just be like in awe, if anything, even though it did look like an everybody hates Chris moment. Well, <laughs> that was Antichrist. I think Lars von Trier is one of our top directors in this channel, even though we don't talk about his films a lot. A reminder, all the uncensored scenes are in the extreme scenes video posted on BitChute. Link in the description. Now let's get to the spooky stuff. Cue to Gohan. So let's get right into it. The most disturbing moment is easily the self mutilation committed by the wife. It was perfect disturbing material. You can see it on BitChute, but beware. The most enjoyed moment is probably in the little fox who can talk. I don't care if you sound like the devil, it was kinda cute. Nah, I'm just kidding. I actually liked that ending. It didn't feel hostile or anything. I almost felt relieved to some level. And that's it. Also, the uncensored extreme parts are in the new miniseries Extreme Scenes on BitChute. I feel it might be better than uploading the same long ass video. Here is the house that Jack built on the right, also directed by Lars von Trier. If you like this movie, you might also like my favorite video, Boknam Rises, aka Bedeviled. Thanks for watching, Spooky out!